Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to look at a question having to do with a NFED half-wave antenna, but that's not the problem. The, the real problem is that Frank has an antenna that goes through a tree and he'd like to kind of make the path of that antenna a little bit jagged so it can kind of stay free of the tree, which is a good idea for when there are windstorms because the trees like to sway and, and the sway is very strong and they'll take down any piece of wire that you have up there. You can put bungee cords on that wire at one end, but I would put them inside a hollow tube like a piece of PVC pipe so that the sun doesn't get to the bungee cords, but that'll keep it nice and tight anyway. Okay, so um, let me read his question. He has an NFED half-wave 80 through 10 antenna, just like giveaway number two, which we just did. Um, he has them 25 feet at the ends, about 15 foot at the bottom of the sag. Uh, I'd like to get, I'd like to see that midpoint higher. Uh, passes through the branches of another tree about 70% of the length measured from the feed point. I want to use a chain link fence top rail without guys. There is a way you can do that, but it'd be cheaper to put the guys in. Um, you can take two chain link fence top rails and let's grab this and you can kind of lay them like this against each other with the wire going along the top and then it will hold the wire up and it won't go to either side and it won't go this way because it's connected to the wire. Uh, however, you end up having to purchase two more chain link fence top rails to do that. You can, that might be a titch safer for your grandkids running around in the backyard. Uh, but the other option is to put in uh, stakes uh, and some guy ropes and keep that thing from falling down. The problem with stakes, of course, is that they are a tripping hazard. And if you do have the little kids running around, make sure you at least get those orange caps for those stakes so that they're visible. I'd go ahead and put up a, a pole right there so that uh, people see it and don't run into it. But you can do it either way. Okay, so um, now one thing that had him puzzled uh, was we're doing a uh, chain link fence top rail. There's two pieces, so one inserts into the other, and it's here on the ground. And you've got the wire coming up here. Okay, how do you attach it? Well, as I have shown uh, with um, some modeling, whenever you bring an active antenna near a pole, the pole starts to become part of the antenna. Now, I'll tell you though, when I tested this very antenna, which is the one I gave away uh, to uh, giveaway number two, um, I put just, uh, I wanted something that the wire could slip through uh, with the wind. So here's the top rail. Okay, I took a piece of rope like this, put a hose clamp around here and just had the rope come up through here, okay? And then that way it could give a little. Now, if you find that the transmission character, the antenna characteristics change a lot when you do this, you can always, and this is where you really want to guide this thing, you can hook a clamp like a bookshelf ramp or something like that that you can get and they come up to about a foot you'd really like to get it three feet away maybe you want to do this with some light wood like a one by two or something like that uh, drill holes pilot holes for the screws because otherwise you will split the wood um, and uh, glue it as well as screw it and then paint the whole thing very thoroughly with a varnish or some kind of paint that is um, uh, not uh, sensitive to UV, okay, flectoverethane or something like that. Uh, 
And then you can put your little rope right here, rope loop, and the thing can kind of go through it without a problem. You could put a pulley there, but a pulley is a piece of metal, so you've got uh, a problem either way. So I think that would help. When I put up my antenna, I had um, this end connected to a tree down about um, seven feet off the ground. And then this end was connected to a aluminum mast that I used for other antennas at about seven feet off the ground. And this was 20 feet off the ground. And uh, this is where I put the transformer and the coax ran fully 50 feet to the lightning arrestor. Okay, why do I have a 50 foot piece of coax for that? Because that 50 foot piece of coax is my standard test coax. I put antennas of all kinds in the backyard and I connect them to that same coax. That way I can get to pretty much everything. Right at the moment it is connected. No, it's not. It's connected to the uh, DX Commander, which we're going to put up very quickly. We have everything ready to do that. We do have a giveaway going. It's an HF SIGS U, or rather Micro BITX, and it's version 6. It comes fully built with a case and a microphone, and I'll throw in a power cord too. And uh, this is a very popular QRP rig. Uh, you can, it's um, got digital control, uh, so you can get it right on the frequency you want to get it on, so on. Uh, fantastic little radio. It is a little big and bulky for hiking up on the top of mountains, but uh, it'd be great for camping, parks on the air, whatever you want to do with it. Um, the, I noticed in reviewing it that the power output per band varies a little bit, so you might want to go inside and tweak the coil windings in there, just move them apart and so on to see if you can get more power out of the thing on the different bands. Don't key down for too long um, and use a dummy load, the proper 50 ohm dummy load. Okay, so please, oh, how to enter, yes, that little detail. Uh, send a postcard, QSL card, or a single page letter in an envelope to uh, Dave Kassler, KE0OG, P.O. Box 98, um, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432, and uh, put giveaway number three on somewhere either inside or outside. And uh, then also include your name and call sign and your um, shipping address, where you'd like it shipped to in case you win. Um, and your phone number in case I have uh, questions. I don't need your email number. At the conclusion of the drawings, all of the entries are thrown into the shred box and will be taken care of in due course. I don't keep addresses or anything like that. I don't sell them. So uh, that gives you a sense of privacy. And in fact, the winner's entry will go into the box with the radio back to him. So he, he'll even get that back. I don't even keep that. Okay, so until we next meet, 73.